By the end of this video, you'll know how to lay out box designs in Fusion 360. We'll take a look at utilizing the sheet metal tools so you can export the 2D flat pattern as a DXF file for your desired machine. Before we get started, you should know that this tutorial is aimed at intermediate level users or those who understand the basic functionality of Fusion 360. To check the prerequisites for this tutorial and to grab the dimensions that I use, head to productdesignonline.com 18. That's productdesignonline.com slash 1-8. To get started, I'm going to set up some user parameters for the box. I figured it would be fun to create a pizza box as it's something that just about everyone has seen in real life. I'll create a height parameter and set this equal to 45 millimeters. Then I'll create the width parameter and I'll set it equal to 355 millimeters. I'll also create and set the length parameter to 355 millimeters since the box is square. At this point, we have our parameters complete so we can now select the sheet metal tab in the toolbar to take advantage of the sheet metal tools. We'll first need to create a new component. I'll name this component pizza box. Now the important thing here is that we need to select the sheet metal component option. This will ensure that our defined sheet metal rules are linked to this component. We're going to set up the sheet metal rules in just a minute so for now, I'll just select any one of these presets and I'll click OK. There are several advantages to using sheet metal tools while creating packaging designs in Fusion 360. One reason is that you'll be able to take advantage of the flange feature, creating realistic bends. Another reason is that we can use the Create Flat Pattern feature to turn our 3D model into a two-dimensional pattern which can then be used with a laser cutter, CNC router, vinyl cutter, or a number of other machines. Generally, the first thing you want to do while setting up a new box or packaging design is to define the sheet metal rules. I'm going to open up the sheet metal rules and I'll create a new rule by clicking the new rule icon to the right of any of these preset rules. I'm going to change the name to Pizza Box. I'll change the thickness to 2.2 millimeters or the thickness of the corrugated board. The second option is the K factor or the ratio of the neutral axis to the material thickness. Put simply, you can think of this as defining how much the material can be stretched. This is typically only used for sheet metal as our corrugated material isn't going to stretch, so we can just set this to zero. The next thing we need to do is define the bend radius, which is under the bend conditions toggle. Because the corrugated cardboard will collapse on itself, we want this to be smaller than the thickness. I'm going to set this to 0.25 millimeters. The last thing that I want to change is the relief shape. I'll toggle open the two bend intersection folder and I'll change the relief shape to square. This means that everywhere we have two bends that intersect will end up with a squared off relief shape. These settings can also be changed at any time as we work on this design. For now, I'll leave everything else set to the defaults and I'll save this. Now that we have our sheet metal rules defined, we'll have to apply them to our pizza box component. I'll toggle open the sheet metal component and you'll see there is a rule option nested underneath. From here, we'll have to switch the rule, which allows us to select our custom pizza box rule. To start the box, I'm just going to use the center rectangle command. I'll draw this off the origin point on the XY origin plane. I'll then set the dimension of one side to the width parameter and the other side to the length parameter. 
In this scenario, the dimensions for the width and length happens to be the same, but I recommend creating different parameters in case you decide later on that you want them to be different. We can now use the flange tool to start the box. We'll be using the flange tool a lot, so I like to use the marking menu. The flange feature is located at about 4 o'clock if you right click and drag in that direction. I'll simply click the rectangle and then I'll click OK as this automatically applies our material thickness. I'm going to repeat the flange command so I can start to create the sides. By default, you'll see the chaining option is selected which chains together all four edges. We'll need to uncheck this option so we can select both the left and right sides. Then we'll input the height user parameter. I'm going to zoom in on one of these bends so you can see what it looks like. You'll see that we have this very small bend as we set our rule to be 0.25 millimeters. This is great if you're working with corrugated cardboard. However, if you're creating a metal part, then you'll want to increase this bend radius. We set our height to the height user parameter and it defaulted to 90 degrees, which is what we want for this box. The next option would be the height datum, where we can specify how the height is defined. If we use the interfaces option, then the height will be defined from the bottom of the interface to the top. Contrary, the outer face option will define the height from the bottom of the outer face to the top. So it will start at the very bottom of the box. The bend position lets us define where to position the bend relative to the selected edges. I'll look at this model from the front view. Watch what happens as I switch back and forth from inside to outside. You'll see the outside option positions the bend on the outer edge of our defined dimensions. Because this is a pizza box, we have some wiggle room and don't need very specific dimensions as we would if this were a sheet metal part. I'm going to set this to the inside option and I'll click OK. The next thing we want to do is create the tabs that are folded inward while assembling the box. I'll activate the flange tool and uncheck the chaining option. I'm going to then select the inside edges of the front. I'll set the height of these to the height parameter times the number 2. We also need to change the bend position to the inside option so our front side of the box can bend over these flaps. I'll click OK. These inner flaps typically have an angle cut on them, so I'll activate the chamfer tool. I'll select the bottom edge of one tab, and I'll change the chamfer type to two distances. For the up arrow, I'm going to do height divided by two. For the other direction, I'll set the distance equal to the height. I'm going to then repeat this on the other side, as I found when doing this type of stuff to sheet metal components, you're best keeping the features separate. We can now create the front of the box that folds over these tabs. I'll activate the flange command once again. Deselect the chaining option and I'll select the front edge. We'll need to switch the bend position to the outside so we can drag this over. As I look at this from the right side, you'll see that our face is touching these tabs. We want to have a small tolerance here so we can switch this to the adjacent option and notice how it moves out just a bit further, ensuring that our faces aren't touching. I'm going to set the height to the height parameter and then I'll click OK. I'll reactivate the flange tool, deselect chaining. Once again, I'll select the edge and for this one, I'll type out a distance of 3 millimeters. 
Notice how the settings default to the adjacent option since we use that last. I'll activate the flange tool again, select the edge, and then I'll drag this directional arrow down. I'm going to enter a height of 44 millimeters and then I'll click OK. Let's take a moment to check what the pattern looks like so far. We can simply click the Create Flat Pattern button in the toolbar. Then we need to define the stationary face. I'll select the bottom face of the box and I'll click OK. So far, everything looks good. We can then finish the flat pattern, and once again, we have our three-dimensional model. If you look at most pizza boxes, you'll see that they have tabs where this front piece folds over to make sure the box doesn't collapse. To create the tabs, we'll also use the flange tool. However, let's first cut out the rectangular slots that the tabs will go into. But first, let me know if you're enjoying this tutorial by clicking that like button, or click that dislike button if you're not. You can also help me out by commenting the word pizza down below in the comments, including your favorite pizza type. I honestly don't know if this will help other Fusion 360 users find this tutorial, but at the very least, we can have some fun with it. I'm going to start the slots by activating the two point rectangle tool. We'll want to make this on the top face of the bottom of our box. I'll make the width of the rectangle 50 millimeters and the height 3 millimeters so we have some extra room for tolerance. Right now, our rectangle is just floating around, so I'll want to dimension it to constrain it. I'll dimension from the side of the rectangle to the inner wall, making this 60 millimeters. I'll add a dimension of 0.3 millimeters from the top of the rectangle to the top edge of the flap. I'm going to hide the sheet metal body in the browser so I can select the rectangle sketch profile. You'll see this projected line will get in the way, splitting the rectangle into two parts. We can turn these into construction lines so it's easier to select the rectangle. I'll select the profile and I'll activate the extrude command. And then I'll turn the body back on so I can select the bottom face of it for the cut distance. We can now mirror this extrude feature over to the other side. I'll activate the modeling mirror command. I'll set the pattern type to features and I'll select the extrude feature in the timeline. I'll select the YZ origin plane as the mirror plane, and then I'll click OK. Now that our slots are cut out, we can take a look at making flanges for the tabs. I'll activate the flange tool, deselect chaining, and I'll select the inner edge. If you look at the blue arrow, you'll see that it's facing 90 degrees from our last edge. Now we want this flange to go straight down, so I'll pull the arrow out just a bit so we can then change the angle to zero degrees. We're also going to get a warning because the geometry will collide with our existing box. We don't want this tab to run across the entire edge, so we'll need to change this to the two offsets option. This will let us select the two interfaces of the slot that we just created. I'm going to clear out each reference in the dialog and then I'll select the left face. I'll then move the model around until I can select the face on the right. We can then add a height of 3.5 millimeters for the tab's height and an offset distance of negative two millimeters to each offset so the tab will fit in place. I'll click OK and then we'll need to repeat these steps for the tab on the other side. Once both tabs are created, then we can take a look at our flat pattern to see what these tabs look like. As I said earlier, this is one benefit of using the sheet metal tools. 
We can simply activate the flat pattern at any time to take a look at it. We can also use the modeling commands while the model is in the flat pattern mode. Let's quickly add a chamfer to the edges of the tab. I'll add an equal distance chamfer of 2 millimeters to both edges of each tab. Depending on your design, you may want to add rounded edges with the fillet command. We can then finish the flat pattern and once again we have our three dimensional model. Let's now finish off this box by creating the other flaps and the top lid. I'll activate the flange tool once again and I'll select the two inner edges of the back side. If you look at a pizza box, these back two flaps are always shorter because they run into the side flaps of the lid. I'll set these equal to the height parameter. We also want to change the bend position to the inside option so our lid can fold over the top of these flaps. I'll then click OK. I'm going to reactivate the flange tool, deselect chaining, and select the back edge. Similar to how we did the front of the box, we'll want to set the height to the height parameter and switch the bend position back to the adjacent option so our faces aren't touching. I'll then click OK. Using the flange feature again, we'll select the top edge. This should default to adjacent since we used that last, so we simply need to type out our dimension. I'm going to enter the length user parameter. Notice how we get a warning message because our flange is intersecting the front of our body. To fix this, while keeping our user parameters in mind, we can type out an equation. I'm going to subtract the thickness, but as you'll see, that still isn't enough. I'll multiply the thickness times 3, and then I'll put that in parentheses. We now have a large enough gap to create the top fold of the box, so I'll click OK. I'm going to select this bottom edge and again we'll use the flange tool. This time I'm going to set the bend position back to the inside option. For the height, I'll set this equal to the height parameter minus the thickness parameter as this top flap doesn't typically touch the bottom surface. Remember that as you're working with any model, you can use the section analysis tool to take a look at the interior elements of a model. These are extremely useful when working with closed off geometry, such as this box. Lastly, we'll need to create the side flaps of the box, and then we'll finish it off with a few small details. Using the flange tool again, I'll select both of these side edges of the upper lid. I'll use the height parameter for the height. Once again, you'll see that we're getting a collision warning. Another great thing about sheet metal is that they are parametric features, so we can go back and change them. We'll need to set these side tabs of the top lid to the inside option, and then we can go back and change the side tabs of the bottom of the box to the adjacent option. I'll double click on the second flange in the timeline to open it up. I'll change this to the adjacent option. It appears that the warning is still there. My guess is that the sides are interfering with the back tabs of the box. However, let's use the section analysis to inspect this from the top. Looking closely, you'll see that the sides are in fact running into those back tabs. To fix this, let's double click to edit the last flange feature in the timeline. We looked at offsetting edges earlier, so let's use the two side option instead. This will let us define the dimension or length of each side starting from the center point. You can either drag the blue single directional arrow or type out exact values. 
If I type out 170 millimeters, you'll see that pulls the edge back far enough that it no longer collides. I'm going to set both of these to 170 millimeters. Then I'll have to select the other edge in the dialog to set both ends to 170 millimeters as well. After clicking OK, our warning message will go away. To double check everything, I'll take a look at the flat pattern view. Overall, everything looks good. We may want to now add some chamfers to the top flaps so it's easier for the user to open and close the lid. I'm going to select the four edges that make up the side flaps. Once they're selected, I'll add a chamfer of 45 millimeters. Then I'll select the two edges of the top flap, adding a chamfer of 25 millimeters since this flap isn't quite as tall. If you look at a lot of pizza box designs, you'll find that they often have venting holes on the back face or the top lid of the box. This is to let the steam out so the pizza doesn't get soggy, but the holes are usually small enough so they don't let out too much heat. I'll finish the flat pattern so I can draw circles directly on the back side of the box. I'll activate the center circle and I'll sketch it on this back face. I'll dimension the diameter of the circle to 15 millimeters. I'll set the dimension from the side of the pizza box to 70 millimeters and then the distance from the edge of this back wall to 22 millimeters, placing it about in the middle. I'm just going to extrude cut this equal to the thickness parameter. Last but not least, I'll mirror one over to the other side using the modeling mirror command. Now you can also create the little tab for the front lid and some of the other small details. But to wrap this up, I want to show you two more important things. I'm going to open the lid of the box so I can point something out. I'm going to find the lid flange feature in the timeline and I'll edit that. Then I'm going to adjust the angle to negative 50 degrees so it appears that the box is open. Looking at the model, you'll see that the chamfers I added to the top flaps are not present. This is because I added them while in the flat mode. If I activate the flat mode again, you'll see they're still there. You'll see that the flat mode has its own timeline with the chamfer features. This is just something to be aware of as features that are created in 3D mode will all translate over to the 2D flat mode. However, edits created in the flat mode will only be present there as sometimes you'll need to create objects that don't show in 3D. However, if I wanted these chamfers to also show up in 3D, then I could use the unfold feature instead of the flat pattern feature. By unfolding the model first, I could then apply any edits in a flat manner. And when you go to refold the model, they will then appear in 3D. I just wanted to point this out as I've seen quite a bit of confusion in the difference between the unfold feature and the flat pattern feature. Of course, once you have your flat pattern complete, you can export it as a DXF file to import into your machine software. Or you can always create a two dimensional technical drawing from your design file. Last but not least, I want to give a shout out to this week's patrons that joined us in the product design online community. Special thanks to John French and Steve Baker for supporting all of the Fusion 360 content that I make. As always, I truly appreciate you taking the time to watch this tutorial. Click that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video. To be part of the Product Design Online community, 
be sure to subscribe and check us out on Patreon by clicking that Patreon logo right now.